image in my life and I can see him and understand him face to face. Because once you come in contact with God, he's not born. Amen. Just look at what he made. Right. Just the creativity that he has. And just think of the privilege that we have to know somebody like that. You see, sometimes our life can feel like we're toiling and toiling and toiling and producing Zippo. King Solomon said, vanity of vanities, all of vanities. I think that pretty much sums it up. Emptiness. It's everything grows old, everything is here today and gone tomorrow. It's kind of like an old piece of chewing gum that you've been chewing all along. I, I, I liken the, the world like a, a cheap carnival that you go to and, and I've said this before but it's like the man standing out there saying come see the two-headed chicken and the zebra lady and the uh, bearded child or whatever else like that and you pull out all the money that you've been saving up that week for, for the fair and you go in and then you look at it and you It seemed all cool on the outside until you walk in. And that's the way it is in huh. the world is there's so many things that glitter and there's so many things that seem good, <laughs> but the reality is, is it's just cheap gum that wears out. What Jesus offers us is something eternal and a living water that refreshes forever. Amen? If I can say this, it's a gum that doesn't wear out. He doesn't get old. He doesn't get boring. Only whenever we become religious is he born. It's only whenever we truly have a come in contact with him that we don't experience life. So what's the answer whenever we're living a life of nothingness is to come in contact the living Christ. Amen. Amen. To push away all the stuff in our life and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? That's right. I need to get to you. I need to see you in yes. my life. Yes. James said it this way, life is but a vapor. You ever see how long a vapor is? Here today, gone tomorrow. In comparison to eternity, life is pretty short. You know, our routines are eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work. Rewind. Eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work. Oh, there's a weekend I can look forward to. And really, I remember even without the Lord, that's all there was to look forward to was a paycheck weekend or something or other like that. And Peter, all he did was fish and fish and eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, producing nothing. But Jesus wanted to come into his life and change his life and turn it around. And once he came into the, the boat and commanded him to cast out, he began to see things change in his life and and begin to produce in his life. See, when Jesus is in the boat, everything changes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Makes all the difference. Amen. Peter may have been doing the same thing that he did, was doing before, but the difference was Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, praise God that Jesus gives us the answer. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. No man comes to the Father except through me. He's the way, the truth. Yes. If we want life, it's through Him, man. Yes. yes. Amen. Through no other means. I still like what somebody once said, and I think it's a Christian comedian, 
said, if you believe that all roads lead to heaven, whenever you're headed home tonight, just, I guess I didn't say this tonight, but I didn't say this this morning, when you head home this morning, just take any road home. Yeah. So every road leads to your house. Mm -hmm. If you're headed to New York, just take any highway. It doesn't make any sense, does it? All roads don't lead to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man can come to the Father except through me. Amen. Those are the words he spoke. So the Lord offers us life. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, really the question is, is the choices and the directions that we make in our life Really, the question is, is it, is it causing us to grow closer to the Lord, or is it causing us to go further from the Lord? See, every day we make choices in our life. Choices in your life led you to be here this morning. Led me to be in the, even in this town. We are the sum total of the choices that we have made in our life. And the real question is, is the choices that we make, is it leading us closer to God or is it leading us further away? Well, that's you don't want to be closer to God. The things that you're building, the things that you're doing in your life, is it, is it for eternity and will it last? Eternal. Or, or will it be just like that? Let me ask you this question this morning. Who are you? You know, I used to ask myself, well, who is, who is Ken Fowler? I think it was well said that there's three people sitting in your seat right now. The person you are right now, the person you can be for evil without Jesus, and the person you can be for God. Who are you? First Kings tells the story of, of four lepers that were outside of a city and that city was under siege by the enemies of Israel. And they were outside the, the city gates because they were lepers. They weren't allowed in. And they reasoned within themselves, if we go in, they'll kill us. But if we stay out here, we're going to die. Because the enemy is coming. This is what they said. Now there was four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city of the gate, and they said to each other, Why shall we stay here till we die? If we say, Well, go, we'll go into the city, the famine is in there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. See, there's a famine in the city because they were under siege. But, see, many of us are in the same boat where we can relate to the statement of why should we stay here and die? In other words, don't just sit where you are and just die. God wants us to move forward and not stay where we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. To stay where we are toiling and eating and sleeping, eat, sleep, die. Eat, sleep, work. But Peter, in this portion of Scripture, shows us what we need to do in order to follow Jesus. In order for us to forsake everything and follow after Jesus. Anybody want to follow Jesus this morning? Amen. Number one, what we need to do is we need to be willing to change. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, Peter was a fisherman by trade and he done it a certain way. But we need to be willing to change. By the raise of hands, how many like to be told they're wrong? Nobody likes to be told they're wrong. You're wrong. In essence, when 